Thanks for stopping by the video today, everyone. This is going to be a follow up to my previous video about iMesh.com, just showing how I convert some of their Blender models into Lumion format and how I've really enjoyed doing that recently. After the previous video, I just asked them if it'd be okay if I take all of their free models and their free materials and I convert them into Lumion format. The reason why I wanted to do this was so that you guys have a much better idea of how these models actually look. You can play around with them. You can use them in your own scene. All the models that I'm giving you today, you are free to use. You don't have to get an iMesh subscription to use them commercially. These are all the free models that they use as just a sample to send out to people. So all those are good to go. I'm gonna show you how to load them up. I really only ask in return that for using these models, just tell me what your thoughts are about them in the comments. I really wanna get an idea if this is something that people are actually interested in. So these models are much better than the Lumion library, in my opinion, because I have fixed all the textures, the UV editing, and all of the origin points. I didn't just import these, slap some textures on and it's done. I've actually gone through every single one of these models inside of Blender and just made small adjustments because I know exactly what has to happen for them to work inside of Lumion. So you're never gonna get any models with origin points way off in the distance. Everything will spin right on top of itself. All of the textures are going to be going in the correct direction. So often with Lumion, if you have a couch and you throw a fabric texture on it, unless you have actually set up the UV map correctly inside of something like Blender, the textures are going to go all over the place and it doesn't look realistic. That's not going to be a problem with these. And on top of that, every single one of the textures, you can actually edit separately. So if there's a couch that you like the legs, but you don't like the fabric, you can change that no problem. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit more in the video. And I just really want to hear what your guys' thoughts are about that. A little side announcement that I want to make as well is that I will be starting Unreal Engine videos sometime in the next couple of weeks. I was actually planning on starting my first video tonight and filming it, but unfortunately I just installed the 3090 into my computer and I'm getting a, a weird GPU hitch. So every three seconds or so I just get like a stutter frame. It, it doesn't affect my performance and I can still do everything that I need to. I just want to try and get that resolved before I film it so that everything is as smooth as possible. I was originally going to start with showing everyone how to use Datasmith inside of Unreal Engine, but then I realized that that's probably not the best thing to start with. So I'm actually going to start with what I was going to have as my second section where I just teach everyone how to set up Unreal Engine, open up a basic file, and then we're going to do blueprints. We're going to do materials, all of these basic things so that when it gets time to do the Datasmith and setting up those materials, you have an idea of what you're doing already because at first I thought that may be easier to start with your own file and start playing with a room, but I thought about it more and I figured that that's actually gonna turn more people off because a lot of people are gonna get stuck and frustrated. Whereas with these small little tutorials of skill builders, you're not gonna get stuck nearly as much and I can focus in on those particular things and find out exactly what people are getting stuck on and help everyone sort of work through that. So. Expect those videos coming soon. I'm really excited about those. But back to this video, we are just gonna quickly run through the models. I'm gonna show you some of the things I like and just sort of teach you how to get around some of the weird things that Lumion makes you do with imported models. But without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you learned something. Imported models library is something I really hope that Lumion revamps soon, especially after you watch this video and you see just how powerful having a custom library can be inside of Lumion, because right now it's it's terrible to use. I, I really do not like this feature. You can only make it, it's you can only make one folder, you can't do subfolders. It, everything just feels very clunky and like it wasn't really meant to scale, which in a way it probably wasn't. It's just a dump for when you bring stuff in from SketchUp. But if this is cleaned up, it could be a really, really powerful tool. So to get started with this, however, is I'm going to go to my documents and you should have at least a Lumion 11 or a Lumion 10. There should be at least one Lumion folder. And right here I have Lumion 11. I'm going to go into library and now I have an iMesh folder already made. So something that I want you to kind of notice here is that background. We have an all caps background here. Edficios Casas, I'm not actually not sure how to say that, but it is right here. So all of the folders that are right 
here are actually showing up. As long as there's a model inside of them, Lumion will pick it up here. So by making an iMesh one, I will just get this, move it out of the way. So go into your iMesh models. You can just grab all of these, go down right to the bottom, drag all of these and move them in. There's 220 Lumion files in here because each model needs four. Each one has a object file library, an in file, an MTT file, and an, a TXX file. And that is really all you have to do for that. So make an iMesh folder, drop them all in here, and then we're actually gonna go and quit out of Lumion, and then we're just gonna restart it. Now that we're back in, I'm just gonna load up Villa Cabrera again. And when we go into our imported models library now, all of those should be there and they're ready to go because I've already adjusted all of them inside of those files and we're just moving those around. So all of the texture information is good. If I go to place, we should now have an iMesh folder, which is right here. And then all of the textures are there, or models rather. So a little example, here is one of the models. So you can just drag and drop that in. The origin point could be a little bit better on this one. That was my fault. But as you can see, it is right underneath the chair. So while it's not dead in the center, it's enough that you can spit it into the spot and it really won't mess it up too much. It, it's always a huge pet peeve when you download something and you think it's good to go, but then the origin point's way off in the distance. So you have to spin the chair in a big circle, move it around. It, none of these models are going to do that. I can personally guarantee that. So the chair is just one example. The other thing that I really focused on when I was doing this is there are some textures with iMesh that has a dining room table with chairs around it. So that's great in Blender because you can adjust each one of those chairs. You can't do that inside of Lumion. So what I did is I actually separated those out as their own objects so that if you need to rotate chairs, if you need to push them in, pull them out, make them look a little random, that's not gonna be a problem at all. So I believe this was the table. And then I also had the chair somewhere here. This is what I was saying about the model library, which kind of is annoying because as of right now, the best way to get all the iMesh stuff is to just put them in their own folder. Whereas I feel like I, I just want to drop these into the Lumion library. And this would really help with that because then I'd just be sorting through a couple of models and it wouldn't be too bad. And here is the chair. So as you can see, I can just put the chair in there. I can drop that in, maybe rotate this one a little bit before I drop it. Put that there and then I'll just quickly go around and place all of these. So this is kind of what I was talking about where it's you have each one of these chairs is their own model so you can just kind of do whatever you need to do and then just drop this last one in here. Maybe we'll pull this one out a little bit more something like that. So obviously the rug is cutting it off but you get the point. I've also gone through and separate out all of the dishes here. So all of these bowls can be placed individually. Whereas typically with the iMesh ones inside of Blender, again, you can change all this inside of Blender. So they just put them in kind of like one package, but I, I went through and separated them all out so that you don't have that problem. You can sit there, you can stack these plates up, no problem. And it, it just is, it works so much better like this. And kind of what I was talking about too, as you can see, when I go in material editing mode, all of these materials are editable. So if you want to make it you have this chair and your client says, you know, I, I love that, but it's got to be red. So what you can do is just go here, change it, bang, it's red. Everything is customizable in that respect. So this is kind of what I've been saying that the Lumion library should be like. You should be able to change all materials and they should be set up properly. Uh, I, I find that the inability to change it kind of ruins a lot of them, even though a lot of them are Evermotion models and they're good models. They're not really usable because they might have like a weird glass material on them or they don't have that right look. So from here, what I also want to talk about is the UV unwrapping that I did on these models. So as you can see, almost all of the models that are here have map scale imported because these are the actual Blender UV maps. If I go here and go to map scale, some of these don't look too, too bad, but you will start to see these kind of weird lines on some of the models because what's happening is Lumion is just taking it, almost drawing this box around the object and then projecting the textures onto it, which for some things like walls, it works fantastic. But for very complex models like beds and sofas, that's just not going to cut it. And you are going to get some very strange textures going on there. 
And if I just pull this back, everything will be good. But let me show you the bed and the sofas to kind of get the point across. So here's the Hamilton replica. This one does need a little bit of work with the textures just because there was quite a bit of things that the iMesh guys did inside of Blender to get that exact look that they wanted. But it's, I do have to do some Photoshop and you kind of get around that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull this down here so you can see this a bit better. But as you can see, imported map scale, all of these textures, they're going in the right direction. Like they just make sense. They're not going all over the place. If you take this and put it up here, right away, you can look at this and you can see how all the textures are kind of going in these weird directions because Lumion, as I said, is trying to unwrap it with a box and that just doesn't work. Whereas with the map scale, it's always going to work in the correct way that you have it set up in Blender. The beds is another one that I wanted to show you because I think this really gets the point across on how great this can be. So I'm going to put this actually in the sun here. So maybe we'll just drop this here so you can see it. Now, if you have this bed and you really want to play around with it, maybe you want to change the texture up, I'm going to show you something. So if you go into Lumion's library here and you put on this, I think this carpet actually works best. So we're going to go in here. We're going to pull the displacement all the way down because I don't want it to mess up the, the ruffles in the blanket here. I'm going to bring the map scale all the way down. So what this kind of does is this tells you how the topology is inside of Lumion. And I actually don't use this texture very often, but I use it a ton for this because what it'll just tell you is where all of the quads are going more or less. And as you can see now, because we went and we set up that texture correct or the model correctly inside of Blender, you're free to use almost any Lumion model or material with it and it's going to work. An example is you can bring it down, now you can use this. Whereas if you don't set it up correctly, this is what it's gonna look like. Like that's the best that you're gonna get and it just won't, you kind of get the point of the color, but the pattern's gonna be wrong. And so if you really wanna get that realism, you can just push it to the next level with these. And I will just show you one more example. So maybe with this one here, you can definitely see how everything gets messed up with the pattern, pull that down, now everything works. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you quickly how to adjust that even further inside of Blender because I went through and adjusted it, but it might not be what you want. So I'm gonna show you how to fix those. Now you can have a particular door like this, or you can also have another layer where what you do is you place down this door. So what I've done is I've actually gone and I've animated the door. So if you wanted to have like a little example is if you're going into a bedroom and you want the door to swing open, that animation is already done. You can have the closed door, the open door, and then the animated door. So the door is closed for the first part of the video. You have a little clip of the door opening. And then for the rest of the video, that door is just open. There's a lot of little tricks that you can do with that. But for the most part, things like doors, I can just animate them and I could put them as kind of like a part of that package for Lumion. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy to do that. It's just worth mentioning that I feel like a lot of people don't animate it like that. So to have models that are ready to go could be kind of cool. That wraps up part one where I'm just going to be focusing on the models. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next video now and we're going to focus on the iMesh materials. Thanks for stopping by this part, everyone.